Now, I have to ask you the Hector question. Ah, uh, here we go. Okay, so there's six movies, correct me if I'm wrong, six movies, and two of them are The Fast and the Furious, so there's five. Your name, Hector, okay? So that's just a coincidence. That That's not something where I'm calling my manager and like, hey, man, if I'm not Hector, I'm not doing this next film, you feel me? That's just a coincidence. Like, Hollywood only knows two names for actors, Hector and Carlos. So the way it would work is that usually I would get a role or an opportunity for another movie or another television show. And I kid you not, 80% of the time, the role and the name for the role was Hector. Wow. And I would just book the role and it's just something that kind of naturally happened on its own. It's not like, you know, I'm out there once again, like, if it's not Hector, I ain't doing the movie. And right. that's how that kicked off, bro. So it just kind of stuck with me, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now I like it and now I'm actually pushing it. Because, you know, fuck it. If I'm known that much like Hector, I'm just going to keep that rolling. You know what I'm saying? Right, so, right. So that's what I'm doing. Now, did you ever look at the first script? Okay, Hector's cool. Then the second script. Okay, fucking Hector. The third script. Fuck Hector. Fourth script. Highway. Hector Travis. The fifth script. Come on. No mommy's way. Did you ever look at it that way? I did, man. I did. I, I was tripping out like exactly how you did it right there. Like I was tripping out like really again? Or is this like... I was starting to think this was punked with Ashton Kutcher at a, you know, for a quick second, but no, nah, long story short, man, it was just all coincidence, straight up. All oh, coincidence. Yeah. Oh, it's, just, it's the weirdest thing, but I get like funny little, you know, I, I don't even know how to say it in my life, curses or blessings in my life. You know, like mm -hmm. I just, it's funny, like acting started off on accident. Like I told you, like right. straight up, straight out. That's awesome. Hector, you know, came up on accident. Like none of this stuff was searched for or forced to happen. All of this stuff just kind of naturally happened. Yeah. Um, so it's been a, it's been an interesting life. You know? But it's a blessing, man, because it, it is a blessing and I'm not complaining at all, bro. Like, right. You know, it's, so, yeah, it's you, a blessing. Part and of I don't take none of this lightly. Like, I right. say it in love, and I say it as humble as I can say it. I, I've been very fortunate in my life. Right. I mean, you, you're a part of a movie that made history. You're, yeah. you're, you're going to be always connected to that. Um, now, is there anyone, like, for me being a DJ slash producer, now uh, my first documentary that I directed, and we're working on our second one, um, is there any actors that you would like to work with personally like there's a lot of producers and rappers that i would like to work with but is there any on there like yeah know? i got two left that i want to so i already knocked off a few of the bucket list items which is clint eastwood mel gibson um denzel washington two that i hope to get under my belt and i got to get them soon is uh robert de niro and al pacino awesome and uh you know that would be a blessing to be in a movie with them um if it happens, that's going to be a miracle from out of nowhere. If it doesn't happen, ah, so be it. I right. got three out of five, you know? Awesome. You know, like, uh, uh, we got a couple of minutes before we go to break. You already shared a little Another bit. break? Yes. Another, God, damn. Another that's got on play. Where's the snack table, G? Oh, the hot dogs and the popcorn are over there. Yeah, homie. I'm like, <laughs> man, you better come with craft service, homeboy. <laughs> Aaron, he's, my brother's being licorice right now. <laughs> but uh, uh, Cheeseburgers or something. Exactly. No, exactly. Frozen. <laughs> um, so we had... Clean Eastwood, you shared with us what he said about peace on the set. Now you have Mel Gibson, and then you have Denzel. What's one thing of each that you can say that you walked away with, maybe that you saw, that you learned, that they might have shared with Denzel, you? Denzel, um, what I walked away with him was that, you know, he uh, never wanted to be disturbed before we were about to get into the scene. You could tell that he was in a zone. He was really in a zone, and, like, it, you, you knew when he was approachable, and you knew when he was unapproachable. And you can just tell if you can read body language. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, that's one thing I learned about him. So what I walked away with him on was, uh, you know, preparation for a scene. And then Clint was a little different. I think being an old timer and uh, being in it so long, it just came so natural to him. Right. Him, uh, it was kind of weird because, and first of all, too, just so you know, he was directing the movie as right. well. So you didn't have time to really talk and chop it up with him because he's trying to act slash direct. Right. But uh, Clint was just real mellow. You could talk to him, and then when it was time for action, it was time for action. He was on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I mean, he, there's no better teacher than being in the middle of the action. That's what I always tell people because you see it right there in your face as opposed to being taught. Right. And so I, I got to see things right there in my face because I'm right there on set. You know, I'm, right. I'm watching behind the camera. I'm on camera. I'm in the rehearsal rooms. I'm doing the table reads. Right. 
And that's how you just naturally start to pick up and learn and, and be like, oh, that's how they do this. And that's how they do that. And I would have never thought of it like that. Okay. And uh, long story short, man, like I, I've been blessed to learn a lot, you know, in my business of things. But I'll tell you this last thing, and I know we got to go to break. No, it's okay. You got I got to minutes. meet. Okay, I'll make this quick. I got to meet George Clooney one time and I asked George Clooney, I said, if you could tell one thing to an actor, what would it be? I never forget his answer. He said, I would know everything about everything. I would know everything from craft service to renting the trailers even, to wardrobe, to producing, to everything. He knows. He goes, you know why? Because when you know at least a piece of everything about the business you're in, nobody can run game on you. Wow. That's what George Clooney said. And wow. I was like, and so I took that. I was like, damn. So he basically said, no, everything about everything, or at least a little bit about everything that you're in, so you at least know somewhat of what people are talking about so you can never be ran game on awesome awesome anything on mail uh what do you mean on mail gibson oh man i did I, I was on pause bro i think that's the first time i ever paused in my life as a human being bro wow. I, I don't think i was like stuck on stupid yeah, no, yeah we, okay. we talked a little bit but not nah, cool cat you know what was weird about that i did a movie with mel gibson and then three months later i did a movie with his son milo gibson really and lawrence fishburne yeah so okay, I was, we'll, I was we'll talk and, a little bit about that when we come. Back. And I told Milo, I was like, "What's up? Did I just work with your dad." He's like, "Yeah, he told me about you." I was like, "He talked about me? What?" <laughs> dope, so yeah, dope, dope. Okay. intermission, intermission. We'll be back. We'll get us some licorice hot dogs and uh, popcorn over there, and uh, we're also gonna get a lap dance. I ain't mad as long as it's not from you. We straight. No, uh, I got two midgets coming in. Okay, now uh, some of the roles that you've done, where you've had a extensive, long acting roles. It, uh, is it easy for you to remember your lines? At first, it wasn't like straight up, straight out. It was pretty hard. But when you do rehearsal and you know what the scene's about and you've been doing it for so long, then it becomes easy to memorize your lines. Okay. So the way that you do it is like you break down a scene and when you know what it is you're supposed to be talking about and you know where the scene is supposed to go, it's easy to memorize. So okay. I've got pretty, uh, you know, you work out a technique, you know, if you've been doing it for so long. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, th those movies that you said you, you forgot about. Um, now, as a producer, I well, because some come out, some don't. You know what I'm saying? So some of them you just do, and you just like, oh, okay, I'll see it when I see it, or hear about it when I hear about it. Right, right. Yeah. So that's a good problem to have. Okay. <laughs> you know. What and, I mean? and you know what? That's what I was going to go to, because as a producer, I've done albums that for some reason got shelved, never came out. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Now, in the movie industry, have you done movies that maybe we may not know about that got shelved? Um, yeah, probably to keep it 100. There's okay. some movies that I did, uh, you know, to keep it real, it's kind of funny. I did 18 movies with Danny Trejo and 18, 18 bro. And some of those, I'm not going to lie. He'll even tell you probably, but yeah, some of them were just straight up dog shit. You know what I mean? It's, it's sometimes you got to just, I'm, I'm just being real, you know, some, some were good, some were bad, you know, just you know, not every movie you do is going to be a winner. You know what I mean? Right now, when you said dog shit, you know what that reminded me of? No, but you're going to tell me. Yes. Chi Chin Chong is dog shit. Oh, yeah. We're smoking dog shit. That's what's up, man. Yeah. I got a homie who makes the Lego pieces of uh, uh -huh. Build a Brick, and it's crazy, man. Like, you, he just came out with the Chi Chin Chong ones. No and, shit. Yeah, and I just got it at the last Comic Con I was at, so I was tripping out. Like, all right. You know, uh, you know, I'm going to throw my brother under the bus real quick. Oh, the, 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 the guy that you at, were talking dog? to? Yeah, yeah. Okay, this guy gets San Diego Comic Con tickets every fucking year. Uh huh. And every year, Tony, I got you. I'm going to take you. Because, you know, now it's almost nearly impossible to fucking get in. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. I'm going to take you. You just sneak in through the you. bag, dog. Well, you're going to have to get me in, homie. Okay. And uh, I, I got low friends in high places, man. I'll make it happen. That'll work. Tony, I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. <laughs> and then every fucking year, oh, you know, I'm taking this check, Tony. Oh, he did you like every that? Every damn year. That's why year. you just go to Staples, homie. You just make a copy of the pass. You win, dog. I'm going to have to do that. Then. Yeah, gee, come okay. on. I think like a Latino. Yeah, and on the pass, what up, uh, Hector? <laughs> on the on the fine print, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Let's take a little quick shot, bro. Uh, you're killing me, Doug. All right, I'm gonna try to do what I can. Let's you, do we it. Tell right. I'm, 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 to, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to do. He didn't hear a damn word I said, but all right. <laughs> I cheated a little bit. I saw that. <laughs> that was good acting. <laughs> hey, that, there you go. There you go. Okay. Now during this pandemic, have you been doing any filming? Stop calling me. I got someone calling my uh, phone while I'm on live. Like, uh, anyways. 
What happened? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Say it again. Say it again. Now, was that real or was that acting? No, that was real. But oh, okay. someone bugging me like they don't get it. But go ahead. Um, during this pandemic, have you been doing any type of filming? I know you said you've been. No, it, this pandemic screwed everything up. So I was in the middle of uh, was about to do four projects. And uh, long story short, man, it just it just jacked things up. So this pandemic just messed everything up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, now I know your manager and your boy were telling me you're working on something comedy. Uh oh, I'm doing a well. I, I can't really say it here okay. publicly or whatever because it's kind of like you know there's non disclosure forms on that. Mm -hmm. But it's the the best way I could say it is it's a Latino hood comedy. No shit. Yeah, so like a Mexican version of Friday. Dope. Yeah, so we're working on putting that together. I think the Latinos need one on the map. So, so that's dope. about the most I can say on that. Now let me ask you. Now this question just for me. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. What type of music do you listen to, man?